All right, the next story I want to talk about is uh, related to the layoffs from, from last week. Um, and this one, uh, right now we're talking about them closing uh, some solar facilities. So they're closing 13 to 14 installation facilities of the Tesla solar business. And this is related to the 9% layoff that they had been, uh, that they announced uh, a couple weeks ago. Now, uh, in this layoff, uh, the company said that it's cuts to overall energy team, including batteries to power, to store power, were in line with the broader 9% staff cut. We continue to expect that Tesla's solar and battery business will be the same as our automotive as automotive over the long term. The company also fired dozens of solar customer service staffers at call centers in Nevada and Utah, according to former Tesla employees, some of whom were terminated in last week's cuts. Ending the Home Depot partnership, which allowed for solar sales in about 800 stores, is part of Tesla's larger effort to absorb Solar City into its high-end brand and sell through 90 of its 109 U.S. retail stores and its website, the company said. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, we, I don't think this is really a surprise to anybody that's been paying attention. Um, the Solar City acquisition hasn't gone great. Um, there was a lot of controversy around it at the time. Um, so there's a lot of stuff happening in this space. And, you know, the, the, what is the future of Tesla's solar business is really the question, because in Q1 of 2017, uh, last, or last Q1, they had 76 megawatts installed. Contrast that to 2016, it was 200 megawatts. That was a huge drop. Um, and so Tesla even said, in announcing quarterly results in February, Tesla said growth in solar deployments would resume later in the year. Now, presumably, this is because they want to uh, they want to grow the Model Three, and they need to get that. So basically, all hands on deck. You know, forget all that stuff for now. Let's make the Model Three successful because that is the make or break moment for the company. And so when you get there, I think that that all makes sense. Right, so um, solar generation in the U.S. is growing rapidly, um, but it is a tiny fraction of the overall uh, energy mix in the United States. Um, and so, Tesla making them may or may not make a difference. Back when they were Solar City, they were the largest kind of installer, but they didn't really make them. Right, so that was the big change. Um, and so there's some questions about what's going to happen in the Buffalo plant and all those kind of things. And so, yeah, big question marks around around this. Now, this is in contrast to a, a new report from the Bloomberg New Energy Finance um, talking about basically what's going on here. There's some really interesting stuff where you can see the power generation and how that's shifting um, and how you know it's going to continue to shift more towards renewables, solar, wind, um, hydro, those kind of things. Um, and then also, you know, the, the battery prices and utility scale solar, like the cost of these things is coming down. In fact, I just saw an episode of uh, Fully Charged uh, with Robert Llewellyn, um, who was talking about they're installing, I believe, the world's largest uh, wind, uh, offshore wind turbine ever. And that this one turbine, I think a blade was over 100 meters, which is insane. And then from there, they would ought to be able to generate, and I, I'm going to mess this up, but go watch his, his show, um, his recent episode. It was talking about, I think, 12 megawatts is, is what the size of the, of the wind, one single uh, wind turbine can do. Um, and that because they're able to make them at that scale, the cost is extreme is extremely reduced, meaning they become more profitable. Um, also, it, it it apparently is better for birds because the blades move uh, uh, slower or something like that. But but anyways, point being, um, you know the renewable stuff and batteries and everything are are on the rise dramatically, and Tesla's solar business is in limbo and in question. So I think that you know when they get back to it, when they get back to the point where they can actually start focusing on this, which I assume would be after they, you know, Model 3 is kind of ramped up and like, you know, business as usual can return or the next big thing they can focus on. Um, I think that we'll, they'll be at a place to really uh, accelerate and that it will become a significant part of their business. But right now it definitely seems to be like it's it's a bit depressed. So I'm curious what you guys think about that. Um, this Tesla Solar, if you have Tesla Solar, let me know how it's going. I ended up going with someone else. 
Um, and so, if, and in fact, if you're interested, I, I use a website called Energy Sage, um, and you can learn more about them at teslanomics.co slash Energy Sage. Basically, you submit your your you know your 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 energy bill. You do you pick your roof line out. You do all these things, um, and then it and then it you know lets people bid on it, and it kind of breaks it down. It's it's an amazing amazing product. So I, I highly recommend it. Um, so I would go check that out if if you are interested in getting solar. Um, and Tesla, you know, it, it isn't necessarily like your first choice. So let me know what you guys think about that down um, in the comments.